I'm going to do my best to try to share with you uh, some of the things that God's been laying on my heart over the last couple of weeks. And uh, I, I want to uh, take us to the book of Matthew. Uh, I'm going to read you a couple of verses from Matthew chapter 26. And uh, we're going to dive in. Probably a little more teaching tonight than preaching. I feel like it's necessary uh, for us to uh, hear the word of the Lord. So I'll give you several passages of scripture. And uh, I will say that if there's ever been a time where the church in general needs to be the New Testament church that we read of in the book of Acts, it's now. And you may ask, why is that uh, uh, statement uh, been made is because I can give you just a glimpse of while I was working today, uh, but in a matter of just a few, pr probably 30 minutes, in a matter of 30 minutes, uh, this is what I observed within a matter of 30 minutes uh, with multiple phone calls uh, right in a row. And uh, a friend of mine that is in ministry, uh, him and his family have been battling COVID for the last three weeks. And uh, in ministry, you use your voice. Uh, and if you don't have a voice, you can't do ministry. And, but it has affected his, his voice. It's affected his Adam's apple and things of that nature. And he's having a really, really hard time. Uh, shortly after that, I receive a call from another individual and says, will you please pray for my grandfather? He walked into a doctor's office today for a routine checkup and then they encouraged him to and this is not about getting a jab or not but it was about hey you haven't had your booster yet and he's 90 years old and he took a booster today and within a few moments he wasn't able to talk and he wasn't able to walk so now he's lying in a very serious condition as we speak right after that my phone rings again and it was someone else called and said, would you please pray uh, for my mother-in-law because she just got diagnosed with breast cancer and they believe it may have spread. What I'm saying to you is this, there is a need for hope. There is a need for men and women to walk with the power and the anointing of God. I appreciate all of the advancements in medicine that we have. And I will not speak ill of that. But can I tell you, we as individuals can only do so much. But we are serving a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly what we could ever ask or think. And today, you and I are all testimonies of that because the simple fact, I believe most of us in this room could say, if it had not been for him, been on my side, where would we be tonight? So I can't overstate the importance of what I'm getting ready to share with you today. And in Matthew chapter 26, it may seem like a really strange passage of scripture, but for a few moments, I want to talk to you about this simple thought. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you ask for. Matthew 26, I'm going to ask you to stand if you're able, if you're not, I understand. Uh, but Matthew 26, 14 through 16, we're going to pick this up uh, in the middle, and then we'll walk this thing back. But it says, then one of the 12, this is talking about the 12 disciples that was walking with Jesus. Then one of the 12 called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priest and said unto them, what will you give me? And I will deliver him unto you. Talking about Jesus. And they coveted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Meaning this, they began to have conversation. They come, they struck a deal. They, they, I don't know what, maybe it started out, maybe it was 100 pieces of silver or, or what have you. I don't know, but they come to an agreement and they entered into covenant for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, Judas sought opportunity to betray him. So for a few moments, I want to take this passage. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to stand and teach your word tonight in the middle of the week. And Lord, I pray that uh, you would be with our church family that's traveling, those in vacation. I pray you'd be with our kids that's at youth camp this week as well, and the volunteers that are there. And Lord, I thank you for all of the staff that's worked the last three days here on the grounds for vacation Bible school and poured into the children that was here. So Lord, today, we're, we just stand here with grateful hearts, and we thank you for all that you've done. 
But Lord, for the next few moments, I pray that you would give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. And Lord, anoint this body to be a vessel that you speak through for the next few moments. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this evening. Let me begin by saying this. It is dangerous for any man or any woman to allow his eyes or his emotions, or say it this way, his feelings, to direct his life. Lester Summerall, as a young man who was a spiritual son to Smith Wigglesworth, he walked to Smith Wigglesworth one day and simply said, Smith, how are you feeling today? Smith Wigglesworth looked at him and he said, Smith Wigglesworth, never ask Smith Wigglesworth how he's feeling because I don't live by feelings, I live by the word of God. Now, you all can be that spiritual if you want to be, but I'm just telling you, I have not quite arrived there yet, okay? I'd love to be there and I'm going to try to get there one day, but how many knows we all have feelings? But how many knows that sometimes our feelings are wrong? And we have to be very careful that we do not allow our feelings and our eyes and our emotions to direct our path. We have often heard the following, but I believe we need to hear it again tonight as we begin this teaching. Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse number 5 and the following. It says, trust in the Lord with part of your heart. Is that what it says? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Notice, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own sight. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Now there's much that we could say about this passage of scripture. But I, I want to pause just for a moment and let you understand that it is in all of our ways we to acknowledge him, meaning this, in the good times, the bad times, and the, even in the times of uncertainty, we should always be searching for the will of God and the voice of God in our lives. And sometimes uh, we get so frustrated with the everyday things of life that we become clouded. And if we're not careful, we will allow our eyes, our emotion, or our feelings to give us a direction that is contrary to the word of God and the will of God for our life. So I caution you this this evening that you must always understand that when Solomon was writing Proverbs 3, he was writing very specifically, he says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. It is then that he will direct your path. Notice this. If we do not acknowledge him in all of our ways, then he cannot direct our paths. It's not, it's not acceptable for us to be 50% in or 75% in. It's not enough for us to say we're going to give God A, B, and C, but we're going to still control D, E, and F. It doesn't work that way. He says the only way that I can direct your path is if you give me everything. And you say, why is it so important for him to direct our path? He says this, he says, don't be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord. It's not talking about a spirit of fear here, but he's talking about always reverence the Lord. Always reverence the word of God. Always reverence his plan and, and his authority. Uh, and then it says, depart from evil. What is evil? I, I can sum it up for you in this manner. Anything that separates you from the will of God and the love of God, it is evil. There, there, we, we've gotten really good at putting things into categories uh, that, well, this is really bad and, and this is really bad, but well, this isn't so bad. Listen, it doesn't necessarily have to be sin, but when you begin to let something take priority in your life that is more important than the things of God, then it becomes evil and you need to get rid of it out of your life. So we find that Solomon was writing, he said, you got to reverence the Lord and, and you got to make sure that there's nothing present in your life that's keeping you from fulfilling the purpose and the will of God in your life. Because when you seek after him and when you reverence him and you seek after him, it will be health to thy navel and moral to thy bones. Our need tonight to be directed by the Holy Spirit in this hour cannot be stated enough throughout history. Men have found themselves in seasons where they thought they knew what they wanted and needed. But all too often, once man obtained that 
which he sought after, he realized it was not what he wanted at all. I heard this statement about two weeks ago and it resonated in my life. The minister said this, you have what you wanted, but you don't want what you have. You have what you wanted, but you don't want what you have. Judas found himself in a conversation and it sounded good to him at the time. He saw all kinds of things going on. And we know Judas had some issues, but somebody in this room that don't have issues, raise your hand. We all have issues, right? So the thing is, he had his issues. But when he was navigating through life, he began to think on things that, that he should not have let his mind go to. And he says, well, it's really not that big of a deal. They're, they're looking for him. They're, they're trying to find out who this Jesus is. Maybe I'll just... I'll just take them to him. Well, what's in it for me? And they coveted together for 30 pieces of silver. But when he had received what he wanted, he realized it wasn't what he wanted. I wonder today if any of us in this room are watching us by way of technology today, if there's ever been things we thought we wanted, but then when we got them, we said, Lord, have mercy. I didn't know what I was asking for. We've all been there, right? That's why I always say, don't ever impulse buy anything. Listen, you can just go look and shop, man. The new leather, oh, it smells so wonderful. The, the moonroof looks wonderful. The wheels are just lovely. Oh, it's got all the bells and whistles. And oh, man, it's wonderful. I need that. But now we're in a society where we're not dealing with $300 car payments or $250 car payments, but we're dealing with $100,000 automobiles. And, oh, it looks good, and it'd look good in my garage and all these things. But how many knows that, uh, that when you sign on the dotted line, you're in, you're in contract, and there it's not so lovely six months later when you're paying seven, eight, nine hundred dollars $900. See, what I'm saying is be careful what you ask for because you may not want it when you get it because it can become something that's weighty it can become something that's not a blessing it can be a hindrance uh, and sometimes I'm not talking just about materialistic things but sometimes in our personal lives we begin to think oh this would be better or this would be better and, and it's all the trickery of the enemy can I tell you it wasn't somebody coming into the garden of Eden with pitchforks and horns but there was a serpent came in and he was speaking very wise and cunning made himself very convincing like he was not a threat, uh, but all of a sudden, guess what? It cost Adam and Eve everything. And you and I are still paying for it today. Notice Judas in Matthew 27. If you turn just a page over in your Bible, verse number 3 and the following. If he was to begin at verse number 1, it was after Jesus has been taken from the Garden of Gethsemane. He's now in the hall with Pilate and getting ready to... He's standing before the chief priest and the elders, and they took counsel against him, and they were seeking to put him to death. Judas seen him bound. And he saw him bound. It began to register in him, oh, what have I done? And notice verse number three. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, talking about Jesus, he repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. Meaning this, that's not our problem. You did it. We have nothing to do with that. And notice what he did. He cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went out and hanged himself and the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it's not lawful for us to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. So they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood even unto this day. Notice what happened. Judas is an example of what not to do. He walked with Jesus, but he failed to surrender 
completely to Jesus. I wonder today how many of us is walking with him, but yet we're still struggling with trying to surrender our all to everything that he's speaking in our lives concerning. I can tell you this, you can come up with all of the excuses in the world not to do. But when God gives you a mandate and God gives you a direction for your life, uh, you, you can try to run from it. You can try to make something else happen. But listen, you will never get away from the call. You'll never get away from the direction that he has. Uh, but you have to come to a place of surrender. Notice Judas, uh, he walked with him but failed to surrender. But when he saw the effects of his decision... When he asked for something and he received it, and then once he had it, the silver was not as beautiful as it once was. It wasn't as appetizing as it once was because when he looked across the hall and he saw the man that he had walked with for three and a half years, uh, been bound in chains uh, and was been accused of things that they knew he did not do and they was commanding him to death, uh, he said, I have sinned. But notice, Judas Repented himself, but he never cried out to Jesus for repentance. He became blurred in his life. In our society today, my friend, we see that which happened to Israel is happening to us today in our culture. In Judges chapter number 17, verse number 6, it says, In those days, speaking of a specific time with Israel, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. You've heard me say this if you've been here any length of time at all. Uh, this is a time in Israel's history uh, when it was the lowest productive time ever. But it was because that they had begun to give themselves to little gods uh, and they began to give themselves to the things that they desired. Uh, they gave themselves to what their eyes told them and what their feelings told them uh, instead of walking in the commandments and the statutes of God. And therefore, they come to a place uh, where they did not produce anything. Currently in our nation, like them, uh, we have many men bowing down uh, to little gods once again, uh, all the while ignoring the one true king. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not just in the world, uh, but it has found its way into the lives of those uh, that are professing to be Christ followers. Uh, listen, I'm not here to be judgmental today, uh, but I'm here to sound the alarm to tell you uh, that men in recent history took it upon themselves to make changes uh, when it comes to the house of God uh, and the requirements uh, that if we're going to be Christians uh, that we can do and can't do. Listen, uh, I still believe the word of God to be true. Uh, I'm not here uh, to, to promote a denomination. I'm not here to, pre to preach my convictions to you. Uh, listen, I hold true to my heritage and I'm proud of that. Uh, but I'm not here to tell you you have to be me. Uh, but what I am here to tell you is this. Uh, you are to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, meaning just because everybody else does something don't mean it's okay for you. Uh, but when the Holy Spirit begins to deal with you uh, and tells you you need to make changes in your life uh, you have to trust him enough to make those changes. Uh, and if you're really doing that, I'm sorry to tell you, uh, but you are not always going to fit in. Uh, you are going to be somebody uh, that is labeled as a peculiar person. Uh, I'd like to ask the question today, where's all the peculiar people at uh, in the United States and other nations? I don't see a lot of them. Uh, and it is simply because uh, of the simple fact uh, is that we have beat to the, we've walked to the beat of the drum of men uh, instead of the drum of God. Uh, we need desperately right now for the Holy Spirit uh, to be uh, actively moving in our lives. Uh, men have drummed up new and improved ideals, uh, thinking we could entice others to participate partake into the things that we have uh, to offer. Uh, but much of what we have embraced uh, has turned out to be what we don't want. Hear me. I listen to ministers stand in their platform week after week after week. And I hear them always saying the same thing. They're tired and they want something different. But please hear me. That which they desire to taste of and that which they desire to drink of can only be obtained when somebody comes to a place of true repentance. We will never get back what we've lost. They have what they wanted, 
but now that they have it, they don't want it. I'm not against changing methods. Every generation has had its style, it's had its flair, what have you. Understand that the music doesn't sound like it did in 1950, but it don't sound like it did in 1980 either. Every, every generation's went through their changes and all of these things. But listen, folks, if you want something different than what you currently have in your life, you're going to have to break the mold that you've been programmed to think in because can I tell you this, and I'm going to tell you this in love tonight. Tell your neighbor, say he loves us. They don't believe you. Tell them simply this. I want to tell you something very clearly. If, if you want something different than what you currently have, you, not anyone else, but you, have to make a change. It's real easy. To say this and this and this and this and this and this. But hear me. The only reason that you and I don't walk with the power and the authority of God is us. It's not evil. It's not a devil. It's because we allow demonic things to oppress us and to get us into a place and I want to say it as elegant as I can tonight. It gets us into a place where we have stinking thinking. Please hear me. Right now, we need men and women to stand up and be counted in the army of God. Judas was sure he wanted that silver until he saw the results of this decision. Friend... Your decisions affects more than you. I can prove it to you with scripture. Romans chapter 12, verse 4 and 5 says, For as we have many members in one body, and can I tell you, every one of those members was screaming at me all night last night after trying to be a young man and work like I did. That was crazy. And all the members have not the same office, but so we've been many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. Hear me. Our, def our decisions affects each other. You and I have different roles to play, whether it be in our marriage, whether it be in our family, our, our, our immediate family, our extended family, whether it be in our, our local faith family. We are all joined together. Now, you can make a positive impact on the body or you can make a negative impact on the body. I can take the most positive person in the world and put them with about four negative people and make them stay with them for a week. They're going to be negative by the end of the week because you're going to take the life right out of them. Listen, you and I today need to understand that our decisions does not just affect us, but they affect everybody around us. Notice, Judas's decision affected more than just him. The powerless, defeated, diseased, hopeless, joyless lives that we currently see as a result of us choosing our own paths instead of walking in his paths if we're not careful. He's got a plan. Notice Jeremiah chapter 6, verse number 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. And as for the old path, where is the good way? And walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Notice the prophet was writing. By the auction of the Holy Ghost in Jeremiah chapter 6. And as he penned, these, he penned these words, he said, Stand ye in the way. Meaning this, just stop and pause for a moment. I want you to look around. And I want you to look and look over here and look over here and look where you're standing. Which path are you on? He's saying you need to stand in the way and you need to 
seek out the old path because it's the good way, meaning this, it's old because it has stood the test of time because it gets you to where you're supposed to be. Now, some people can come up with some new ideals and things, but guess what? They won't tell you about all of the, all of the dangers on those paths and you, you'll end up off course if you get on those paths. But there's one path that's remained and it's remained throughout generations and it still gets you to a place that you need to be. There's, there's still only one path that'll get you to a place of healing. There's only one path that'll get you to a place of victory. There's only one path that'll get you to a place of restoration. Uh, there's only one path that'll get you to a place of hope and joy. Uh, that path is Jesus Christ. But we've created all these other things. But notice, the prophet simply said, stand away, ask for the old path, where is the good way? And if you walk in there, notice it says, you will find rest for your souls. We are in a society today that is absent of rest. And oh, how we need rest today. But I must ask this question, not in a mean-spirited way, but which path are you currently walking? I'm not asking if you're walking a religious path. I'm not asking if you're walking a church path. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking that. I'm asking well, what, what path are you walking? Meaning this, is it your way or can you honestly say that you are allowing him to direct your path? Are you allowing him to lead you and guide you? Please hear me today. When you choose to do your own thing, it always costs you more than what you want to pay. Judas, oh, that silver looks so good. It sounded so good. But when he saw Jesus been betrayed and he saw the silver, he said, this isn't what I want. But that's what he said he wanted. Please, please hear the word of the Lord today. Sometimes we think we know what we need and what we want. But if we're not careful, we will end up so far off track. You cannot allow your feelings to determine your destiny. You have to allow God to direct you in all things. And can I tell you, it's not always easy. And sometimes it seems like he's silent. But here's what I would say to you. If you find yourself in a time where it seems like he's silent, then you just keep doing what he told you to do the last time until he tells you to do something new. Because he hasn't changed your course yet. Now I understand that society and social media with all of its filters and its ability to make all of us look 20 years younger. If you use the right filter on social media and all oh, you just look perfect. Can I tell you there is not a person in this room that has a perfect life. But the enemy is doing a very good job not just with children, but with 50-year-olds and 60-year-olds where they're comparing themselves to one another and saying, well, if God was really blessing me like he should, I would have what... Listen, you don't want what they have because their life is just as jacked up, if not more, than yours. Can I tell you that without breaking confidence? Because, I listen, I talk to a bunch of them. I know. But listen, what I'm saying today is this. We all have issues. But we all have a God that loves us. And we have a God that says, listen, if you'll trust me, I will direct your path and you'll find rest for your soul. And if you'll walk the good way, then you will walk with power and authority. Please hear me. This world is in trouble. 
Just a couple of weeks ago, I stood in this platform and I, I spoke concerning some things. And, and I will tell you that since that time, we have seen much activity on the global stage that does not get national attention. But can I tell you, that which God has said he was going to do over the last few years, he is doing in a rapid fashion as we speak. Can I tell you, God's got a plan. I'm not here full of doom and gloom tonight, but I'm here full of excitement. And I understand that the enemy would love to sift you and destroy you and cause all kinds of havoc in your life. Uh, listen, we all go through those types of things. Uh, but can I tell you, our God is greater. Uh, there is governments that's toppling. There's people been removed. Uh, all kinds of things is happening. Uh, what is this all about? Is God is orchestrating and realigning a lot of things in our world. Uh, and for those that will trust in in the Lord. They are going to experience his mighty hand. Uh, they will experience the outpouring of his spirit. Uh, and we can see uh, the power of God on display in this generation. But you have to be careful what you ask for. Do you really want what you have right now? I believe that there is many men and women today that has asked for things. And because sometimes God gives us what we ask for because we're just stubborn, won't quit asking. And he says, well, if you're not going to trust me, I'll let you do what you do. But can I tell you, they're probably sitting there today saying, man, I, I, wish, I wish I didn't have what I have. Because it isn't what they thought it was going to be. My prayer tonight is this, and I'm bringing this to a close. My prayer tonight is this, while there is grace and mercy still been extended to the people of our nation and the nations of the world, my prayer is that they would awaken and cry out to the one true king. But more importantly, my prayer is tonight that Christ followers would be the ones that would lead the charge because I still believe the word of God to be true. Solomon and build a house to the Lord and he began to pray and he prayed this extensive prayer but in the evening time the Lord come to him and at night time he said I've heard your prayer and I've chosen this place for my house a house of sacrifice and he said, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain or if I command locusts to devour the land or if I send pestilence among my people most of you can quote this next verse. He said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear the land. Hear me. He was talking about a natural temple there. But we know that after Jesus came and hung on that old rugged cross and was placed in a borrowed tomb and three days later rose again, it was no longer about a temple that was built with hands. It was about a temple right here. Paul said it. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Do you not know that you're the temple of God? And when we, the temple of God, will begin to cry out, God is faithful to respond to the prayers that's made in this place. Notice, maybe there's some things in your life that you said, man, I... I I wish was different. Are you really seeking God for his direction concerning it? Or, or are you just allowing your mind and emotions and feelings to run wild, unchecked, and say, bless God, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. There's been a few times I can tell you this. If I'd have did what I wanted to do, I would have made a big, big mistake. I would have made some major messes. I, there's been a few times I prayed, Lord, if you'll just look away for five minutes and let me take care of it. Listen, we've all been there, right? But that little, still, small voice has protected me for the last many years of my life. I haven't always got it right. But I can tell you this, in all of the years of ministry that Debbie and I have been part of, 
If we've done anything at all, it's done this. We've kept a pure heart and we've said this. God, it's not what I want, but it's what you want. Has it been easy? No. Has it been worth it? Absolutely. Because I've seen the goodness of God, and the power of God, and the healing hand of God. I've seen marriages be healed. I've seen people delivered and set free. I've seen those come to the altar and give their life to Jesus. I've took the hands of people and led them in the prayer of salvation. And I've seen their continents change. I would not trade any of that. Because it was all part of his plan. Was there some pain involved? Yeah. Was there some struggle involved? Yeah. But God. Tonight, be careful what you ask for. Because we're in a place right now, and I'm closing. I'm going to come and play softly, and we'll pray together in just a moment. I want you to be careful what you ask for in this season because of the season that we find ourselves in. Because the season that we find ourselves in is a season where there has to be discernment. The enemy would love to strip you from every good thing that you have. We're human. All of us in this room are full of flaw and error. Sometimes we disappoint those that's closest to us. But tonight, please understand. Let's don't be so quick to give up on each other because God never gave up on us. There is some things worth fighting for. Families worth fighting for. Communities worth fighting for. Our state is worth fighting for. Our nation's worth fighting for. Our church is worth fighting for. The churches across this Whitewater Valley are worth fighting for. So be careful what you ask for. It's real tempting sometimes to take the easy way out. I've been doing this a long time. And I love what I do. But there's sometimes it gets a little lonely and it gets a little heavy. And I'll be very honest with you. Sometimes there's a fleeting thought that goes through my mind. Every other career path is 20 and out. I know that's of the devil. I, there's no retirement in this thing. I understand that. Because it's always pursuing after him. But I... I'd be lying to you if I said that thought never came through my mind. And depending on what day that thought comes through my mind, it sounds better than others. Well, I could still do this and still do this and wouldn't have to do all this and all this. And the enemy makes it sound really good. But then you pause and you look at the big picture. And you say, where in the world did that come from? Nothing more than the lies of the enemy to tell you you're not good enough or you can't do this and you'll never achieve this and you'll never get to that from here and you'll never get that. Listen, be careful what you ask for. Because sometimes you'll say, God, I think, I, I think I've had enough. I think, I've, I think it's time. And he'll say, okay. I'll let you go do that, but that's not my plan. It's not my will, but I'll let you do it. And when you go down that road, you get over here and it's like, oh, I don't want this. But he said, well, I know you don't want it and I don't want you to have it either, but I'm going to teach you something. And you have to go through some hard things. But because of his grace, because of his mercy, he'll bring you back. But can I tell you, be careful. Be careful. Because there's some things, if you get too far, notice Judas. 
he crossed the line when he started making covenant with evil. Can I tell you, most people don't backslide overnight. Most people don't walk away from God overnight. Most of the stories that I know tell you this. They started walking away from God while they still sat in the church every Sunday morning. They began to get distracted. Some of them started walking away from God while they were still singing, while they were still playing, while they were still in the pews, uh, lifting their hands. Even while they were still saying amen, they, they was already walking away because they was making choices, making choices, making choices. And they started saying, well, maybe I want this, and maybe I want this, and well, I'll take this. And I heard one minister of a specific dom- denomination, a very large denomination, very effective across the globe. He made this statement. He was an older man. And he said, many, many years ago, he said, I was, he said, I was, I was boozing it up. I was dancing it up. And he said, I was, he said, I was out in the world doing what the world does. And he said, one day I walked by a little white building and I heard some music coming out of it. And I just walked in and he said, it changed my life. He said, I was enjoying life at the moment. He said, I had everything to offer. He said, they were signing me to a professional baseball career. And he said, everything was looking well for me. And he said, about to walk into this little white building. He said, all the music is coming. He said, I didn't have no family. But he said, when I walked in, he said, y'all began to love on me. And he said, I ran to the altar, gave my life to Jesus. And he said, then y'all began to tell me things. Y'all began to teach me. You said, you can do this, and you can do this, and you can do this, and then you don't do this, and you don't do that, and oh, you surely don't need to be this. And he said, I loved you all so much. And he said, I I, I just did what you said. And he said, I don't regret that decision. He said, but then the Lord called me to preach, and he's one of the most powerful preachers that you'll ever hear, in my opinion. But he said, now all these years later, he said, I could stand and say this. And he said, you all can get mad at me if you want. He said, because I'm an old man and don't care. And he said, I've gave my life to this denomination for the ministry. And he said, everything that you told me I couldn't do, you guys now do on a weekly basis religiously. You told me I couldn't do. And he begins to list a whole list of things. And he said, now you guys do them every week. He said, I haven't changed. But he said, you've changed. And can I tell you this? When you look at that denomination today, it doesn't have the power that it once had. It doesn't have the anointing it once had. It doesn't have the zeal that it once had. There's behavior running rampant in it that does not magnify and glorify God. Am I saying it's a list of do's and don'ts? No. But I'm just saying that there was leadership in that denomination like many others that began to say, well, we want this. And well, yeah, we want this now. And we want this. And God said, okay, you can have it. But every time you put that in there, something else has to come out. And they lose a little bit more anointing, a little bit more anointing. And now... They have religion. It's a form of godliness, but there is no power. Listen, your children, my children, our grandchildren, they got to have more than a form. They got to have the true power and the anointing of God if they're going to stand in this hour. There's not one devil behind the bush today, but there's hundreds of devils behind the bush today just seeking your children and your grandchildren. So don't ask for an easy road. No. Don't ask just, oh, let it all be feel good and easy for me. Because can I tell you, it wasn't easy for him but because he was willing to take the course that he took. 
you and I can walk with power and authority. But we got to make sure we say yes to the right things in our life. As we stand all over the house this evening. As we pause on a Wednesday evening and I would caution all of us tonight to maybe pause and just ask ourselves, is the things that I'm asking God for, is that really what God's plan is for my life? Because after all of these years of living, I can tell you this, when I thought I had it right, I had it wrong. He had other plans. And I know that we're intellectual and Some of you are far more intellectual than I am, and that's all right. We have our areas of expertise. We're professional in our fields and all of those things. But no matter how much intellect we have, please hear me, we still need the leading of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Without it, we will go astray. But with it, We can walk steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the work of the Lord, and we can change a world. We can reach a hurting generation, but you have to be careful what you ask for. I want to just pray with you tonight before we go. I want you right where you are today. I'm not asking you to tell me anything but I'm going to ask you to ask yourself the decisions that I'm making currently are they in alignment with what God's plan is for my life if not ask the Lord to give you the grace as well as the strength to change ask him to give you wisdom and knowledge and understanding on how He wants you to proceed from this moment forward. We can't just continue to go around and ask based on how we feel. But we do have to come back to the word of the Lord and say, God, what does your word say concerning my life? And now, Lord, give me wisdom and knowledge on how to move from there. That's how I want you to pray tonight, right where you're standing as we pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. I thank you for the privilege tonight to take these few moments and to teach your word. Lord, I thank you that you're alive and that you're not far off, but you're ever present. And Lord, right in the middle of the week, you you love us enough to meet us here in your house, the house of prayer, to just... Give us a little nudge and say, be careful what you ask for. Because, Lord, I do believe this. You have some great and mighty things for the men and women in this room, as well as for those that are watching us tonight and joining us by way of technology. And, Lord, tonight my prayer is this. Lord, if there is a, if there's a movement right now of the enemy and the lives of any of those present under the sound of our voice in any manner. Lord, I pray that first of all that it would be able to be acknowledged that it's not of you. That the spirit of discernment would rise up inside of these men and women of God and that you would let them know, hey, it's time to hit the pause button and regroup and reposition. And Father, today I pray for every family that's represented here. I pray for strength. I pray for direction. I pray for guidance. I pray for the healing hand of God to be upon them. Lord, I pray today that we as a church would just continue to jail and grow and develop together. Lord, I still believe our best days are ahead. And Lord, today I pray that you would help us in knowing how to ask and what to ask for. That's only by your wisdom. Lord, we don't lean to our own understanding. We don't pretend to have it all figured out. But tonight, Lord, we know this, that you are faithful 
to those that call on your name. So tonight, Father, as individuals as well as a corporate body, we're calling out to you and we're saying, God, lead us. God, guide us. God, direct us. Let your plans and your will be known. Let there be no question. But Lord, I pray tonight that every snare of the enemy would be destroyed. I pray tonight that families would just experience a sense of healing and a sense of just new direction and guidance. Lord, I pray that there would just begin to be a spirit of expectancy to rise in your people because we know this, that it's your plan for us to go from glory to glory to glory. And Lord, on the prophetic calendar, we know that we're in the latter moments of the last days. And Father, today we know that that means that there's a fresh outpouring of your spirit coming. And it's already beginning to fall in many places. But Lord, we ask for it to fall here. And Lord, I pray today for those that need a special touch in their body, whether it be mentally, physically, emotionally. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would minister to them right now where they are. And Lord, I just speak life and liberty and freedom over them. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to go with us throughout this week. Help us, Lord, as we continue to be your hands and feet. Help us to be salt and light in the world in which we live. Lord, I pray especially for our church family that's be traveling this week. And some will be leaving, some will be coming home. And Lord, I pray for the remainder of camp this week. And I just pray that you would get the glory and the honor for all that is done there. And Lord, I thank you for the lives that's been changed and transformed. Be with us the remainder of this week, I pray, until we come back to this house this Lord's day. And the church says, amen and amen. Yes, sir. Our neighbor had the heat on that a few days ago. We had the cancer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Let's pray right now. Let's pray for Ed right now. Can we do that? Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today corporately. Lord, in alignment with your word. In your word it says that if there's two or three gathered together, you're present. And Father, we're gathered together. And Lord, these individuals have asked for special prayer. And Lord, we lift up Ed tonight that's received a bad report physically. But, Lord, we know this, that cancer is not too hard for you. And Lord, I don't know where they stand with you. I don't know what their relationship is with you. But, Father, I pray that this would be just a time where you would be on display. And, Lord, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. So, Lord, we're asking specifically. You tell us not to ask amiss. So we're going to ask specifically tonight for Ed. We ask for cancer to be removed from his body. And we ask for the healing virtue that flowed from your garment that went into the woman with the issue of the blood. We pray for that same virtue to flow into Ed's body. And Lord, to dry up that cancer and for it to be removed. And Father, I thank you for doing so in Jesus' name. And Lord, for the others today, it's battling cancer. Lord, I pray specifically for there to be a dispelling of it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hey everyone, uh, Cameron here from PTC Ministries. I'm so glad that you could join us today uh, for the message here. Uh, I hope the message touched you uh, in a personal way and that you could take that and mold that and move it and let it move you in your life. And as you can continue your walk with Christ, continue your walk with us as well. Follow us, uh, click in the link below in the description there. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. And don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Uh, I feel like a YouTuber here, but don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel to uh, stay connected with us. Um, and thank you for joining us.